Okay, so I'm just modifying the included little shroud cover thing that came with the uh, 1080 Ti. And so I've already chopped it out, but I've put this little piece of white paper in there. It's like a high gloss uh, paper, like what's used in uh, the inserts for um, like DVDs and stuff, the paper inserts. So I've taped that in there and so, and there was a piece of extra piece of plastic here that was sort of blocking up this hole here for where there's meant to be some LED strips or something go through it. And then here's the little EK badge thing, it's a little bit dirty. Um, but my plan is to put one of those flicker flame LEDs, the ones that look like a little flame, in behind here, diffuse it. So pretty much just, I think just the Hopefully either the 1080 Ti logo or just the EK logo will flicker like fire and look kind of cool, it doesn't really match the theme of my build or anything, I just thought, hey, let's do it, see how it looks. Here's the back plate, it doesn't fit on the card as is because the screws that EK use, these ones, are just too thick. I uh, probably could have reused the original standoffs that came with the card, I think. Wait, no, I couldn't have, um, because they're pretty much, they're even smaller than this, than the screws EK supply, so I'm probably just going to wrap the back of this in Kapton tape, the back of the, um, uh, the back plate, <laughs> that's what it's called, uh, I'm going to wrap the back plate and then probably tape it on with duct tape or something just so it looks extra bad. I put some photos up on Facebook on like a PC group and some people got really upset, well, kind of upset. So, I don't know, it's my computer, I can do what I want with it. <laughs> okay, so I've stuck the butcher's paper on. Uh, well, it's not really butcher's paper, it's um, uh, baking paper, a bit different. Uh, a, bit, a lot more non-stick. And I just cut a little square, stuck it over the back of... Uh, this camera shit doesn't want to focus. Stuck it over the back of the EK logo. Um, I still kept a little white piece of paper I stuck in there, behind there, so like any case lighting. It's got a mirrored finish, so it has a bit of a... It cuts the light down way, way fast. So, a bit hard to do this one-handed, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit the camera down and then show you roughly what it's gonna look like. Probably as in focus as I can get, but it's gonna look something like that. It's a lot darker in person, and I might put a resistor on it anyway. Um, so that's the light in there. Okay, so here is, here's the Flicker LED, and it's got a little, it's got a little um, chip inside there, a little processor or whatever. It makes it flicker like a flame. It's really hard to tell when it's not diffused. It just looks like a blinky light, but uh, when we diffuse it, like this, so I've got that lined up. The LED itself, the lens, makes a little cast a funny shadow, but as you can see, it sort of fills up that EK logo nicely. And if we just take that out and then we get some really sharp snips and we just chop just the just the tip circumcision here and then oh man I have to do this under the table otherwise I'll chop my eye out with a piece of hard plastic hear that they explode and it's the LED so if I stick that back in the LED tester 9000 and then I think I got, uh, I can never remember the polarity of LEDs. Maybe I killed this one. Oh, I think I killed it. Did I kill it? Yeah, I think I cut way too close to the, um, yeah, to the chip. I killed this one. I, I wasn't looking when I was cutting it. But if you just snip the very tip off them, it um, really cuts down the, the lensing effect on the light. Let me get another one. Yeah, as I mentioned before, like, um, cutting the end off really diffuses it, that's why they come with these. You can buy these in packs of 24. They come with uh, CR something, I can't remember the number on them. They might have the number written on them, they usually don't. They come with uh, little cell batteries, they are CR 2032s. And they come with a decent amount of power in them. Amount of charge, that is. And then... To get them apart, it's really easy. Just pop them open like that. Then you've got your LED. 
This one works. Which one's positive? That one. And now this time I'm going to chop the end off without destroying it. So I'm going to go a bit further to the end. And then, as you may be able to tell, I've snipped just the end off and it's really... They all crack differently when you cut them, so... Let's see how this one goes. There we go, this one still works. Now you don't get that weird halo lens effect on the end. So if I stick this back in here, oh that's way better. And it looks more like a flame because it really scatters a lot around. So if I, I have to do this while it's on, but if I hot glue that in the right position, I can get like a little flickery, flickery logo. And I think if you, if you packed it full here, you could probably get it to work, but it really just wants to shine through the EK logo. So, yeah, I'm going to hot glue this in and then pop it back in the case and see how it looks. Okie dokie. So, I've just finished hot gluing this light in. I used a little, one of those little breakout boards for SOP8 uh, chips and used that to hold it up and I hot glued it in. So now it's at the, hopefully at the right angle. I also did in fact manage to get the paper to stick and everything and then I coloured it in a little bit, stopped some light leaking. And yeah, so another side effect of the hot glue as you can see is it really diffuses that light. So I haven't actually tried this yet so hopefully it should look pretty good once I stick it on. Um, I was getting light bleeding around the edges but I'll sort of trim that up a little bit with some, I don't know, maybe some black tape or something. And that's what it looks like in the back. I still need to solder in some uh, some wires for that one. Um, I'm going to put a resistor on. I'm just going to run it off probably just 5 volts for now. Just tack it off somewhere on the power supply. I'll probably use JST connectors and a female 4-pin uh, inline Molex connector for that one. And then, yeah, it should look pretty neat. I could tack it off the actual graphics card itself. A, I don't know what voltage it is. I think it's just 5 volts. And B, uh, I would have to pull the card apart again. I don't really want to do that. So I'll just tack it off somewhere else, which should be fine. And as you can see, it, this isn't the brightest it can run, but it does look pretty good. So I'm going to whack this together and we'll see what it looks like. Okie dokie, so I put a 110 ohm resistor. I meant to use 120 ohms if I want 20 milliamps coming off uh, 5 volts. Uh, but I didn't have one right in front of me, so I just used uh, just used 110. Now the difference is going to be maybe 0.3 of a milliamp going through the LED. And it's a flickering LED anyway, so it's going to have a bit more drop than that. So, oh shit, that was way out of focus. Yeah, so should be no problem. I'm going to probably just bog this full of uh, hot glue just because um, these little the legs and everything on this thing are lapping in the breeze so yeah work on getting it plugged in so here is the finished item so there's the uh, there's the LED down in there I blacked out some of the letters behind it so it didn't bleed so much then we got this uh, JST connector here and then we got the positive side goes to here, goes to the 5 volt side of this here connector. This was a leftover connector from another video I did. Um, so go back and check that out. Uh, and uh, the difference in gauge of wire is just mainly, I'm making this out of scraps. So uh, this is all just scraps apart from the connector itself and the cover. So I'm going to whack this into the computer and we'll see how it looks. <laughs>